I'm going to trace the steps from how energy gets from solar energy from the sun into usable energy in the form of ATP. First, we're going to start with solar energy. And that comes from the sun. Sunlight emits photons and these are converted. All right, the first step is to create glucose. Glucose is just an example of a type of sugar that can be converted. There's lots of different types, but we're just going to be working with glucose for this example. The organisms that convert it are called photoautotrophs. Photo means light, auto means self, and troph means food. These include plants, algae, things like seaweed, as well as uh, phytoplankton. These are the things that live on the plankton, that live on the surface of the ocean. Um, these are plant-like protists. They do this through a process called photosynthesis. which takes place in the chloroplast. Again, chloroplasts kind of look like these funky shaped M&Ms with grana. Okay. So once we have glucose, glucose is basically a form of chemical energy. This form of chemical energy cannot be used right away by a cell that has to be converted. Okay, so here's our chemical energy. The next step is to convert it from glucose into ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and it is like an energy currency for the cell. It is like a rechargeable battery. We use it, but we can also refill it. The organisms that perform this conversion are what we call heterotrophs. The organisms that perform this are called heterotrophs. Hetero means different, different foods. They have to get food sources from a different place. These are basically all of our eukaryotes. Which include animals, plants, fungi, and protists. Bacteria or prokaryotes also perform this. These are our, back, our, our eubacteria and our archaeobacteria. However, they do not have membrane-bound organelles, and so this takes place across membranes. This is kind of different. They, so let's go back to our eukaryotes up here. These guys do a process called aerobic, or sometimes called cellular respiration. This takes place in the mighty mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Again, mitochondria are kind of a jelly bean shape with another membrane on the inside. And it takes place across these membranes. Once it is turned into ATP, we call this basically usable energy. for cells.
So every time you eat, you are converting glucose basically into ATP. Every time you take a walk or get exercise or do any of your bodily functions, ATP is used. And again, it has to go back and eat more to constantly recharge this battery. Let's take a look at aerobic respiration or cellular respiration a little bit closer. Basically what's going to be happening in the mitochondria, we're going to be taking that glucose, which is the product of photosynthesis, combining it with oxygen that we breathe in. We're going to convert it into carbon dioxide that we exhale, as well as water vapor that we exhale. Ideally, we end up with 38 ATP, but this is only underneath the ideal conditions. This is a balanced equation, meaning the, the number of products or reactants equals the number of products. And so I put a six, six, six in front of each one of these. Um, I kind of remember this because it's evil for Miss Nichols to make us remember this equation. Um, so six, six, six. Here are the three basic steps of cellular respiration or aerobic respiration. The first one is called glycolysis, where we convert glucose into pyruvate. We receive two net gain of ATP, and this occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. That pyruvate then goes into our mitochondria, where it's absorbed into the Krebs cycle which is, occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria, where we have a net gain of 4 ATP. FAD and NADH2 are carried over to the electron transport chain, which is in the membranes of the cristae, where we have a net gain of 38 ATP. In some instances, there's no oxygen available. And in that case, the organism will go through something called either alcoholic fermentation or lactic acid fermentation. Alcoholic fermentation is performed by either yeast or bacteria. Yeast are used in the bread and beer making industries, whereas bacteria are used for yogurt, cheese, and cottage cheese. Again, they both start with uh, glucose, C6H12O6, and they are reduced into either ethyl alcohol, and a byproduct is carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide is what makes bread have all those nice nooks and crannies. And again, we have a net gain of 2 ATP. In this scenario, no oxygen is required. It is completely anaerobic. The other type of fermentation is called lactic acid fermentation. And this is when your muscle cells run out of usable oxygen. They convert from cellular respiration, which is aerobic, into lactic acid fermentation, which is anaerobic. Again, we start with glucose, which is basically split in half into two molecules of lactic acid. And again, through the process of glycolysis, we have a net gain of two ATP.